And tonight, the debate after the debate. Who won? Both presidential candidates looking for the knockout punch tonight. Plus the hottest ticket in our town, Dodger World Series seats. Who have them and who don't? Also ahead on Action News, cleaning up our city's schoolyards. Dope dealers, buyers, and peddlers rounded up in a massive school sweep. And at last, the mystery of the Shroud of Turin. Is it the burial cloth of Christ? We have some answers from some experts. That and more just ahead. My new refrigerator broke. This bought from you has this stain protection that's locked in. Wait, 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 wait. Where did it carpet? Stain protection locked in before the carpet's a carpet. As the airline with one of the world's most modern fleets, we are eagerly following the development of this experimental hypersonic passenger aircraft that will allow us in the not too distant future to fly from, say, Los Angeles to Tokyo in about an hour. So we do hope you like your roast beef rare. Singapore girl, you'll always be a great way to fly. I'm sure this is how change. Is. no place else. You don't work for a company, you are the company. You take the risks, you get the rewards. That's why there's the corporate card with unique benefits for small business. Quarterly Manage, it's a business card that does things a little differently, a little better, like you. The corporate card from American Express to your success. It's a World Series matchup. The Dodgers and Channel 2's Keith Oberman. KCBS Television in Los Angeles, Southern California's most honored news broadcast. This is Channel 2 Action News at 11. Good evening, everybody. I'm John Schubeck. And I'm Trisha Toyota. Our top story tonight at 11 o'clock, win, lose, or draw. Experts are still deciding who won tonight's presidential debate at UCLA's Pauley Pavilion. What we do know right now is that this was the last face-to-face -face matchup between George Bush and Michael Dukakis. With less than four weeks until the election, they attacked each other tonight on ethics, the environment, abortion, defense, and social security. Our Warren Olney was at the UCLA campus tonight, and we're going to find out what he thought of the whole thing, Warren. Well, Trisha, we can't tell you who won, but we can tell you that if either candidate hoped for a knockout punch, he did not get it. But then both campaigns claimed publicly in advance that was not what they were looking for. Vice President George Bush, the Republican nominee, and Governor Michael Dukakis, the Democratic nominee. Bush handlers claimed they just wanted to hang on to their shaky lead in the polls. Dukakis campaigners claimed they wanted their man to show the voters he's a likable guy. We love you and we're grateful to you for everything that you've given to us. Bush even found something nice to say about Dukakis. We use that as a role model. The way he took understandable pride in his heritage, what his family means to him. But then what about all that negative campaigning? I am not gonna let Governor Dukakis go through this election without explaining some of these very liberal positions. He's the one that said, I am a liberal, traditional liberal, progressive liberal Democrat. I'm not keeping count, but I think Mr. Bush has used the label liberal at least 10 times. If yeah. I had a dollar, George, for every time you use that label, I'd qualify for one of those tax breaks for the rich that you want to give away. And Dukakis demonstrated once again he thinks Bush's choice of a running mate is a major issue. Mr. Bush picked Dan Quayle, and before he did it, he said, watch my choice for vice president. It will tell all. And it sure did. It sure did. I've never seen such a pounding, an unfair pounding on a young senator in my entire life. I made a good selection. The American people are seeing it, and I am proud of it. It has been well known that Bush and his wife lost a child to leukemia. Tonight, Dukakis said he and his wife also lost a baby, 20 minutes after its birth. Still, the two men differed about abortion, even as a means of avoiding such tragedy. I don't think that you make an exception based on medical knowledge at the time. I think human life is very, very precious. And, and look, uh, this hasn't been an easy decision for me to meet work, meet. I know others disagree with it. Who are we to say, well, under certain circumstances, it's all right, but under circumstances, it isn't. That's a decision that only a woman can make after consulting her conscience and consulting her religious principles. 
And I would hope that we would give to women in this country the right to make that decision. The moment that the debate was over, a horde of campaign staffers and elected officials moved in for the spin to tell reporters who won the debate and how they ought to report it. And in the midst of the bedlam, each campaign's line was repeated early and often. The Republicans are now zero for three in these debates, and Mike Dukakis uh, was a clear winner. Democrats have won all three. I mean, and when three strikes, you're out, and the, uh, the three strikes on them. We think we're uh, three for three in, in these debates. Congratulations, Mr. President. That's the first time I've ever called on that, and I know it's for real. I think the vice president was consistent throughout the debate and did a good job of articulating his position on the issues, which is why he won tonight. I thought the complete uh, 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 dismissal of this whole question of labels that uh, the vice president has rela relied on uh, so excessively, I think that uh, uh, Governor Dukakis put that to rest completely. I hope it's put to rest by the end of tonight's debate. I think it had become something of a joke, and that's what it should be. Like lots of Americans, Mike Dukakis has some positions that people call liberal and some that people call conservative. It's been put to rest. Dukakis uh, is the liberal candidate in the race. George Bush is a mainstream conservative. We found that George Bush is in step with the mainstream viewpoint of the American people. George Bush has still got a Dan Quayle problem. The word Ortega never seems to cross his lips, and he never seems to indicate that there is a problem with the Sandinistas. Everybody's got an argument, but without any major dramatic moment, any new issues or any major mistake, it is easy for both sides to claim victory. But if Bush was ahead going in, he may still be ahead now. And Michael Dukakis has just three weeks left to make up the difference, with no more big league events like tonight's to give him a boost. All right, Warren, thank you very much. Like moths drawn irresistibly to a flame, protesters of every imaginable stripe showed up outside Pauley Pavilion for tonight's televised debate. For a while this evening, it looked as if the UCLA campus had reverted to the 60s. There were hundreds of demonstrators, and it seemed almost as many causes. Some were against American involvement in Central America. Some want more government action to combat AIDS. Some had a point to make about Massachusetts and the prison furlough issue. And each and every one of those individuals had a lot to say on the issue. For all the activity on UCLA's campus, it seemed as if relatively few university students were actually joining in all of this tumult. Although UCLA students do have a protest of their own, very few of them were allowed to attend tonight's debate. Well, John, perhaps the most predictable thing about the debates is that each candidate will declare himself the winner. George Bush emerged triumphant from Pauley Pavilion and went directly to a rally and celebration at Loyola Marymount University. And Ruth Ashton Taylor was there tonight. Vice President George Bush. About 3,500 people here in the Loyola Marymount University Pavilion chose their winner before the debate began. The audience of mainly college students from around the area applauded warmly as Vice President Bush defended his running mate, Senator Dan Quayle. He, unlike my opponent, is an expert in national defense, helped amend the INF Treaty, so we got a good sound treaty. When the most enthusiastic outburst seemed to come after the vice president's responses on defense and peace and when he answered the question about heroes. Oh, when he said, when he mentioned the astronauts. And he brought up President Reagan's name. That was a politically a very smart thing to do, bringing up the name of the most popular president in history. Of course, the highlight of the evening for this thoroughly partisan crowd was the arrival in person of Vice President and Mrs. Bush. Bush again spoke briefly of his vision of the future. Keep this economic expansion going until every single man and woman who want a job in the private sector have a job. And that is my objective. And the vice president asked for what this audience enthusiastically gave. I came here to ask for your support. And if I have that strong support, I will be the next president of the United States of America. Thank you all and God bless you. Thank you very much. This crowd obviously put a positive George Bush spin on the debate. Tomorrow, the vice president will campaign in more Bush territory in Orange County. With Aisha Taylor, Channel 2 Action News.
Governor Dukakis supporters gave their man a huge show of support as well in Beverly Hills after the debate tonight. Our Sylvia Lopez was in the middle of a very enthusiastic crowd. Democratic volunteers, staff and advisors watched the verbal jousting from the Beverly Hilton Hotel. <laughs> then afterwards celebrated what they say was a knockout win for Michael Dukakis. Their triumphant candidate arrived shortly after the debate to more cheers. Was it a clean sweep? <laughs> Although Dukakis is again claiming victory this time around, he made it clear he wants one more shot at Bush. We're starting to get our opponents out from behind the flag factories and the balloons. And people have a chance to see where they stand on the basic and fundamental challenges that face this country. That's why debates are so important. That's why we ought to have a third debate. No doubt supporters knew their candidate was the underdog going into tonight's event. The question is, did he show the kind of warmth needed to overcome negative polls? He showed heart. He showed sensitivity on the struggles that families face in their everyday lives. Mike Dukakis won, uh, you know, won virtually every single round, and I think that's a clean sweep for, for the Dukakis-Benson ticket. We've won all three debates and are ready to move forward in the next several weeks to win this election on November the 8th. Tomorrow, Senator Lloyd Benson joins through caucus in California. Democratic campaign officials say after tonight, this race is closer than ever, and the days ahead will become closer still. In Beverly Hills, Sylvia Lopez, Channel 2 Action News. When John and I come back, the hottest ticket in town. Oh, yeah, that's the ticket indeed. The Dodgers and the A's in the North versus the South World Series after this. Channel 2 Action News is sponsored in part by Delta Dental. Established in 1955, Delta Dental is California's oldest and largest group dental plan. Uh, anyway, I was there for a while. Hey, can we extend? There were other debates going on today here in Los Angeles. Who's going to win the World Series between the Dodgers and the Oakland A's? And where can you get tickets? The scramble began early, and Steve Rambo reports so did the frustration. The Dodgers win it. A cold third strike. And with that pitch, the Dodgers grabbed the prize, a National League pennant and a trip to the World Series. And today, fans have been searching for their own prize. This, a World Series ticket. Now, what to do if you want one? Well, there are a lot of places to get tickets, but this isn't one of them. You got to get them over the phone. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that, and they keep showing up at this location. And some of them are a little bit upset. I've been here for my third time this morning. Nobody's opened the, 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 that office over there. This year, there are no over-the-counter ticket sales at the stadium ticket office. Call the Dodgers to ask why. They'll tell you, don't call us, call these guys. The best available seats that we have. Ticketmaster oh, and Ticketron have tickets. At this point in time, there are no additional tickets for the World Series. Well, they had tickets, but the man in charge of Ticketmaster says more will become available. So be patient and call again later. Now, if you're willing to pay a little more, okay, a whole lot more than face value, local ticket brokers have a seat at the series for you. Prices today started at around $150 this morning, but by early afternoon, good seats were selling for over $500 each. And a note for those of you thinking of heading to Oakland for a game or two, forget it. At last check, tickets there were more expensive than here. Plus, you'd be in enemy territory. Steve Rambo, Channel 2 Action News. And more to come here. A crackdown on classroom drugs. They just make the biggest drug bust near schools in L.A. after this. Here's your change, Miss Bullwinkle. Here's your change, Miss Bullwinkle. At Chevron, when it comes to service, we do our homework. Yeah. And while we're yeah. the first to admit that not every station is absolutely perfect. Good morning. Ah, uh, Miss, thank you. Here's your Bullwinkle, Miss Change. We're working on it. Your change, Miss Bullwinkle. Chevron. We fuel your freedom. 
This man is going to Tokyo and Osaka on serious business, and some of the best people in his field are going along. They're participating in an important exhibition, so their reservations, flight time, ground transportation, equipment, everything's got to go right. That's why they went with the airline that has a proven track record in the Pacific. Which airline did the U.S. college all-star teams choose when they played this year's Japan Bowl? Japan Airlines, comfortably ahead worldwide. A Huntington Beach teenager has been ordered to stand trial for the hit-and-run murder of a young mother. Today, a judge ruled that there is enough evidence to try 19-year-old Danny Ornelas. He is charged with deliberately running down Debbie Killalay as she walked with her children down an alley in Newport Beach. Tests show that Ornelas was drunk at the time. A key piece of evidence in this case is a videotape of the alleged murder. It was taken by a passenger in Ornelas's car. If convicted, he faces up to 25 years to life in prison. In Los Angeles and across the nation, the story tonight is of a massive crackdown on drug dealers. Here in Los Angeles, the special target was dealers who sell dope near schools. In this exclusive videotape, Action News cameras were on the scene moments after the police and drug agents moved in on a drug dealing center. These arrests on Compton Avenue yesterday were part of a coordinated sweep from Long Beach to the San Fernando Valley. Authorities targeting dope hotspots near 15 schools. Andy. Under the federal statutes, if you sell dope within a school, open or closed, public or private school, you're going to go away for five years minimum time. This raid was less than a thousand feet from the classes and playground of a junior high school. The sweep netted 83 arrests. 29 of those will be prosecuted. Agents say most of those arrested are gang members. And in city after city, local police and federal agents are rounding up suspected members of Jamaican drug dealing gangs. Starting last night and continuing throughout today, arrests were made in New York and Houston, Miami, Detroit, Philadelphia, and Los Angeles. The Jamaican gangs, called posses, are said to control a big part of the crack cocaine supply and are linked to almost 1,500 deaths in just over three years. The posses were born in the slums of Jamaica, and their members are in this country illegally. Authorities are concerned that the posses are expanding their activities to link up with the biggest drug-dealing gangs in Los Angeles. Next up on Action News, Kevin has a weather word. And that word is wet when we come back. In selecting the winner of the European Car of the Year Award, judges have considered the following criteria. Value and general design. Performance. Handling. Talk to well. Sponsored by Coco's new bakery restaurants. Now featuring their special prime rib dinner. is now baking up freshness every day. State agricultural officials are fighting fire with fire or make that medflies with medflies, as today they released the first batch of 8 million sterile medflies in West L.A. This follows last Thursday's spraying of malathion, all of it intended to wipe out the crop-destroying pests. Millions more sterile flies will be released in coming days. In the meantime, 76 square miles on the west side remain under quarantine to stop the spread of the insect that means that no fruits and vegetables can be removed from that area. It never rains in Southern California. Wait a minute. <laughs> You've been listening to those you Albert Hammond lie. records again. <laughs> I've got one more reason, folks, that you're going to be probably be very happy that we are going to have the World Series in the West. Forecast the temperatures for the New York area over the weekend. If you want one more good reason, we're glad the Dodgers won. They probably will be in the upper 30s. They've got a real oh, good freeze goodness. going back there. They're going to have to put another log on the old wood-burning blanket, I guess. Mm. It's definitely fall there, and it looks like it's going to be an interesting 48 hours in our corner of the world. And I'll show you why in a minute. Marina Del Rey, a little earlier today, high of 73 at the Civic Center. We had a low of 62 degrees. Presently, we have cloudy skies around much of the Southland, 63 degrees with west breezes at 7 miles an hour. Now, Friday is going to be the transition day. Tomorrow we're going to have a lot of clouds, so obviously the temperatures will not be that warm. Only 70 in the valleys, near 70 at the beach, just about equal. Look at the low desert. Only 87, 75 in the high desert. Now around the country, they're going to be having what I call a, a tongue of very winter-like temperatures. That's the gray on your screen. Those are going to be 20, so you can see obviously only three areas of warmth. Southern Florida, southern Texas, and the Southland itself. As far as tomorrow's highs are concerned, there's going to be a lot of heat developing in the nation's interior. Still going to be very cold in the northeast. What's going 
going on with our weather over the next 24 hours is very simple. We have a frontal system arriving, bringing some rain. It hasn't rained since July 25th in Sacramento. It did today. San Francisco picking up some showers right now, so maybe they're glad that the game will be in L.A. this weekend. Santa Barbara has some scattered showers as well. Here's what's going on. This huge frontal line is starting to move through, but it's breaking up. Here's what you should look at on this picture. You'll notice how these clouds are going to start to arc a little. That's because there's a dome of high pressure right here. As it arcs over the area, it will bring some rain over the weekend to the northern uh, northwest coast. However, for us, it's going to build in and almost give us a Santa Ana condition. So with the low departing, the next system will bring the rain to the north. And for us, it's going to get a little warmer for the weekend and breezy just in time for the ball game. So we can all sit at home if we weren't lucky enough to get tickets and enjoy it with a nice cold one. Cloudy moments of moisture. It's the title of our new weather album. 72 tomorrow. Let's make it near 80 on Saturday, over 80 on Sunday, and it looks like more sunshine as well. Tomorrow's going to be the uh, the type of day that if it's a little rainy in the morning, drive carefully, will you? Because it'll, that moisture will start to come up on the surface of the freeways, and it could be yeah. like a skating rink out there. And I'm not talking Wayne Gretzky type either, okay? All right. Have Good a good advice, Kev. You bet. Thank you very much. And when we come back, the Shroud of Turin. Fact or fake after this? So yeah, it was one of those days for home cooking. So for Mercedes Benz dealer. How long has it been since a musical lifted you beyond your greatest expectations? Les Miserables is the musical sensation you've been waiting for. The dazzling musical spectacular with an award-winning score that stirs the soul and a story that inspires you to take on the world. And now the best musical in years has seats available through April 30th. Call 1-800-233-3123 for Les Miserables, because you've waited long enough. An American official is being held hostage at this hour in Veracruz, Mexico. The police say an armed man stormed into the U.S. consulate there and took the American consul general hostage. One news service in Mexico says the armed man is demanding the release of his brother from prison. It's not known whether others are also being held. The uh, controversy surrounding the Shroud of Turin continues, and now, after months of testing in high-tech uh, atomic labs, the Roman Catholic Church says the Shroud is not the burial cloth of Christ, but dates instead back to the Middle Ages, a thousand years after his death. A cathedral in Turin, Italy, holds the cloth deemed sacred by some and fraudulent by others. Recently, the church turned over fragments of the material to labs in England, Switzerland, and the University of Arizona for carbon-14 dating. All three labs agreed the shroud is about 700 years old and dates back not to the time of the crucifixion, but... From uh, 1260 to 1390 AD. But the mystery is really only partially solved. Knowing what it is not does not prove what it is. Tests show the image was not painted on. Stranger still, it appears to have come from a three-dimensional form. And there are blood stains where crucifixion wounds would be. Those mysteries have kept the faithful coming to see the shroud and kept the Catholic Church from disclaiming it entirely. But the position of the church is to continue to consider uh, this uh, shroud, holy shroud, as an icon, as a representation which is mysterious. The church says that it is open to more testing if new methods are devised in the future. And up next, the last word in sports. Tonight, the Oakland A's come to town to take on the Dodgers after this. Fact. The home club has demonstrated over and over again that its prices are lower than the competition. Question. When I heard Vons was taking over Safeway, I got a little nervous. Now we're searching for the most beautiful woman in all of Southern California. From Orange County to Ventura, we'll conduct the most exhaustive talent search ever. And when we find that one in a million girl, we'll crown her Miss Eye on L.A. Call for an application, 520-5000. And stay tuned to Channel 7. Miss Eye on L.A. could be you. Number one in Southern California. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. With Paul Moyer and Tony Little. Johnny Mountain has weather. And Jim Hill with sports. Now, the Southland's leading news, Eyewitness News at 11. The second and final clash between Bush and Dukakis is now history tonight. Good evening, everybody. It's now 11.30. It started with a hand... 
And besides the Belcher Honeycutt Stewart stuff, one more subplot to watch. Oakland third base coach Jimmy Lefevre was, of course, NL Rookie of the Year for the Dodgers in 65, later a coach for Lasorda until the two had a major falling out in 1979. The other big story in sports is terrible news. Mike Venezia, one of the top jockeys on the East Coast since the 60s, was killed during a race today at Belmont Park in New York. His mount broke a leg. Venezia was thrown and trampled. There is videotape of the incident. We have chosen not to show it out of respect for Venezia's memory. Mike Venezia was 43. He was contemplating retirement from racing at the end of the current New York meet. It seems like just the other day, the Lakers were celebrating on the forum floor another NBA championship. Come to think of it, it was. Anyway, tonight they open up the preseason against Golden State in the 50th state. Hawaiian eyes were trying to follow the bouncing ball, which uh, it did not bounce at all. And Magic's rope to Kareem for two. Mahalo. Not bad for the Lakers captain. Byron Scott and James Worthy worked the fast break with a little style and flair. Can't they count these games in the standings? Check out the passing here. Three Lakers touch the ball. Scott, who just signed a new five-year deal, really earns his money here. Lakers lead in the second, 50-37. to 37, A partial score at 11.35 at night. And guess who else is back? Yes, the Celts. But what's that? Trouble for Bird? Who's this coach? Jimmy Rogers? No, the Celtics did not look in midseason form as Larry Nance and Cleveland blow past them. The final, Cavaliers 121, Boston 80. And the Celts say, we got to do this through next June. Hockey, as they faced and vanquished an undefeated team last night in the Boston Bruins, the Kings will again put their unblemished record on the line Saturday against an equally perfect team. The Philly Flyers are 3-0 after a barn burner in Bloomington tonight. Brian Propp cashes in against the North Stars, the first of three for him. Philly would need them all. Pelly, don't call me, Britt Eklund puts one home. Flyers go on to win the NHL's only game of the night, 7-6. Back to baseball, the Associated Press is reporting that Davey Johnson will be back to manage the vanquished Mets next year. AP says Johnson signed a new two-year contract. Bet everybody's real excited about this in New York tonight. And one other Met playoff note was Ron Darling unhappy last night, chased in the second inning, throwing the game away, if you will, the same night that his anti-chewing tobacco public service announcement debuts on network TV. The only way to avoid tobacco's danger is to avoid tobacco, all tobacco. Remember, Ronnie, don't throw away that World Series berth with the chaw. And don't forget, we'll have that World Series for you beginning Saturday at 5 right here on CBS. <laughs> when I say we, of course, I mean the CBS radio network. <laughs> All right. Don't be misled. All right. Thanks, Heath, very much. And that's it for us tonight. Bye-bye. Have a good evening.